All right, Skinny from the Nine. What's good? Man, glad to have you, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Um, Well, there's been a lot of stuff in hip-hop lately going on, man. Uh, You know, we kind of talked about it off-camera a little bit, man. You know, so what are your thoughts with everything going on with Gunna, Boston Richie, and everything? That's crazy, yo. Like, they snitched. Mm. I think Gunna snitched. Boston Richie, he snitched. And that's crazy. I was definitely surprised when all everything started coming out, man. Uh, but we knew Gunner was going to tell. Mm. You saw him back then on Crime Stoppers. And you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing him on Crime, Sto- Crime on. Stoppers. We knew that. There ain't no excuse for what he did. You feel me? Because Thug put him on. Mm. Young Thug made him rich. Young Thug made him famous. Young Thug gave him the biggest alley-oop of the world. Without Young Thug, there'd be no Gunna. So for Gunna to do that, it's like no excuse. Feel me? Like, I feel like when it comes to snitching, like people usually have an excuse on why they did it. You get what I'm saying? And maybe you could get some sympathy from some people. You feel what I'm saying? But in this case, there's no there like there's no excuse. Like, you snitched on Young Thug. Feel me? Like, You're talking about like the six nine where he's like, "Oh, dude was being with my chick." And there's an excuse behind that. They kidnapped me. me, fucked my baby mama, stole mad money from me. So it's like, all right, like there's some type of maybe you know, like there's some type of gray line there of like an excuse on why you did it. You feel me? But like, what can you? What could Gunna say? Like, if you ask Gunna, why'd you do it? What 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 could you what could you what could Gunna say? Yeah, you ask Gunna, you ask Six Nine, why you snitch? He's gonna be like, they fucked my baby mama, they did this, they did that, they did this. All right, next. Ask Gunna, what what can you say? Why'd you snitch on Young Thug? Mm. There's literally no excuse behind it. I can't even think of one if I was him. Feel me? And that Boston Richie shit, I don't even know. I don't even know dude like that, but shit, that shit was crazy too. Shit. That shit was crazy, you know? You know, there was kind of, you know, a lot of backlash from that one. Uh, 1090 Jake. Gonna, gonna get little... backlash too, though. Well, well I, I meant but 1090 Jake got the backlash for putting it out. And you know what I'm saying? 1090 Jake got backlash for that? Yeah, there was lawyers were coming out. We were trying to say that Boston Richie wasn't snitching. And... I don't know. 1090 Jake shit. I don't know. I just know that shit would... Uh... Gunna's getting backlash too, but Gunna is not actively posting. If Gunna was posting more, we would have... There'll be more stuff about Gunna. Boston Richie, he was just like, fuck y'all niggas. Like, and he keep, he keep adding fuel to the fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, Boston Richie should have laid low for a little bit, I feel like. He should have laid low and, like, you know, like, went back to the drawing board. But instead, he started showing his money. You know, if people think you snitched, whether you did or didn't, and then, like, you just flex your money and shit like that, like, that's a big fuck you to people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people take offense to some shit like that. So that just makes people mad at you even more. You know, but the thing is with people, yo, like the music industry, like when you reach such such success like that, like so fast, like I feel like people think they're invincible. Like I'm bigger than the program. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I could do anything and get away with it and nobody's going to do nothing. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like that'd be the mentality of some of the new artists coming up when they come up so fast. But in reality, in hindsight, like you're not bigger than the program. You know what I'm saying? So it don't make sense to add fuel to the fire, you know? And like, I don't even know the Boston situation that much. Like I read some shit about that, like some shit about a murder or some shit like that. But that shit crazy. But you know, I feel like, like when 6 9 snitched, I feel like at that, like at that point of time, like that was the first time I feel like the world saw like a snitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, broadcasted around the world. Like, 
there's been snitches, you know, in all of history, but like a famous rapper snitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just how he looked, like, you know, 6 and 9 had colorful hair, mad tattoos and shit like that. I feel like that was like the definition of a snitch for a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he like, like, but now when you got a nigga like Gunna and like a nigga like Boston Richie, like these is two like, you would say street niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like two gangsters. They fit the demographic of a gangster. They like, you know what I'm saying? Street, they don't look nothing like 6 9 you know? But they still snitched. So now I feel like that fucks the people's mind a little bit. That it's like, damn, like, you don't gotta be a goofy like 6 9 You can still like be like somewhat cut and somewhat thorough and still tell because of Boston and Richie and Gunna. You know what I'm saying? And like now I just feel like the people's heads is fucked up. And like, I don't know where this shit gonna go. You feel me? It's been a crazy amount of rappers who've been exposed for snitching. It's 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 like the amount of people. It's like the paperwork. Just like who keeps on coming? Uh, who else? Um, the one dude that had that hit uh, out of Florida snitched. Uh, they had the paperwork on Spot him. Spot him, got him. Spot him, got Spot him. Spot him, got him. I saw that shit. I don't really know what the situation with that one was too. But that's what I'm saying. It's like now the shit. But like the to top, top telling on the dead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Birdman's brother. Yeah, I don't really see yeah, it. I don't really know, but he's not famous though. You okay. know what I'm saying? We're talking about famous rappers. You know what I'm saying? Deals and all. Spot him, got him. The Pop Hunter. But like, Pop them Pop niggas is kids though. You feel Pop, me? Pop Hunter was a kid when that But Spot him, got him. He a kid too. Like, he don't look like Gunner and Boston he... Richie though. Come on, like, come on. I just feel like that shit fucked a lot of people's minds up. Like, and like, Pop Hunter and like Boston Richie, like, I mean, Pop Hunter and uh, Spot Em Got Em, like, they ain't have nowhere near as success as like Gunna. You know? Oh, yeah, no, Gunna's big. So it's like, that shit's weird. Like, it just fucks with the people's heads. It's just like, but you know, man, just everybody just stay out the streets. <laughs> Feel me? It's hard to be a rapper and a street nigga at the same time. I mean, that's what they say about Gunna is that like a lot of people didn't really believe Gunna was like this heavy street dude. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, shit though. But you rep if you if you're gonna be a part of it and you're gonna rep the gang and shit like that, you gotta take everything to come with it. You know, you can't just you can't just I'm here now because it's a good time. And then when shit hits the fan, well, shit, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know, Gunna knew what was going on way before he was probably ever YSL. You chose that. Feel me? Mm. I hear you, man. Well, people say I snitched. Say I snitched. I don't care. Nigga. I don't think I snitched. I was a kid. Feel me? I was like 16 years old. Some nigga set a house on fire. He snitched on me. He said I did it. Feel me? A nigga said I snitched on him. That shit kind of stunned my career a little bit. But nigga, I ain't snitched. A nigga told on me. Feel me? People turn their eye to that. Feel me? People just like always to make people the bad guy and shit like that. Uh, that's like, another thing too, Like, man. what's this? Like, let me play something for you. Like, you could keep talking though. Yeah, that's another thing is like, you know, with the way things are, man, they're, they're just, everybody's quick to call. Somebody is snitch nowadays. Because too. the world likes to see other people fail. You know? But if you are a snitch, then you're a snitch. Like, but like some shit, some shit don't really make sense though. Like some shit just gotta like people need to like use their brain a little more, you know? Like I feel like people don't I feel like people ignore the facts and they just believe what they want to believe because of the media and shit like that, you know? Like, look at this shit. Hold on. Where is this shit at? See, look. My name, my name's David. My real name's David Villegas. Okay? This is a nigga snitching on me. Feel me? Saying like I know for a fact I can 
Feel me, bro? You heard him say my name? David. He's like my brother, dude. Skinny. So you feel me? You might got that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right, you feel sure. me? Nigga snitched on my brother. My brother's in jail right now. Did you see that? I did it. My brother's in jail right now. Nigga snitched on him. Street nigga snitched on him. Ain't that some shit? So. Well, uh, so you were accused. Did you did you get convicted of anything? Did you beat the case? Nah, I didn't even get in trouble, bro, because I had nothing to do with it. Somebody, the nigga that snitched on me, he was just scared. He didn't want to get in trouble by himself. So he tried to like blame the shit on me, you know? And yeah, but nothing ever happened. No, no, like, and just because, yeah, the media is just retarded. Look, my brother calling me right now. Hold on. Look, what I say? What'd you say? Josh Jail. An inmate at the Bergen County Jail. This call will be monitored. I told him I was doing the Camp Capone. He a fan. No, he, people be watching your shit. Oh, shit. Let me see what he got. Thank you for using Global Tell Link. Yeah. Yeah. What's good, yeah? Shit, sure. I'm at the Camp Capone interview. You doing the interview right now? Yeah. Oh, wow. What you got me on speaker? Yeah. I told, oh, I told him how niggas snitched on you and shit. I said free you and shit. Hell yeah, that's a fact. I'm about to be home soon, though. For niggas who don't know. The skinny's blood, brother. Real, like, really a stepper, nigga. Like, nigga sat three years in the county. That nigga gunner, he will never be able to do some shit like that. A nigga's a bitch. <laughs> so, we were just talking about that nigga. He snitched. Nigga, niggas ain't rocking with that nigga in here, bro. That nigga fool. So, and what about free the homies, free Josh, free Young Thug, nigga. Fuck you talking about. And what about that nigga Boston nigga Richie? He told too. Yeah, fuck that nigga. Yeah, you telling. Them niggas in the way. Fool. That's and, a fact. Yeah, but I'm, I got three years in the county. So, what I want up? niggas to know, man. Niggas told on you? Solid, nigga. Hell yeah. Mad niggas told on me. Mad niggas gave statements, but. It's all good, though. I stay solid, nigga. Three years in the county, nigga. Free that, like, nigga. But yeah, nigga's about to be home soon, though. So keep doing what you're doing, big bro. You and, know that. Um, tell Capone, good looking for the opportunity. And um, yeah, one more thing, though. I want to say free all my niggas, free the bros, free Young Thug. Definitely can't forget about that nigga Federal. Free that nigga Federal. Free Federal, yeah, free Splash, free Splash Zanotti, free Young Focus. If niggas don't know, Fed, that's our brother, that's our new artist. He got something to say to that nigga Gunner, too. Hold on. Yo, what's good, yo? What's good, gang? Shit, you already know. Love that nigga, man. Nah, boys, man. Yeah, Federal, you already. Nigga. What's good, man? Shit, and I'm at the interview. Word, talk yo, your yeah, shit though, we man. got talk your shit, talk your shit, cause I got we got You move already on. know, man. Hey yo, all right, yo, you know already this this federal man, nah boys, man. Skinny my big bro, man. That's my that's, that's my legend, nigga. It's this new artist, man. That nigga gunner, man. That shit crazy, man. You never don't supposed to bite the hand that feeds you, man. That nigga fed that nigga, man. Now he out there, he just saw my girl some fake crocs too. For the small, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. You saw that? Bro, they said gunner was working at Crocs. You really? saw that? No, yeah, they said Gunner was working at Crocs. I saw that video. Yeah, what is born? Like, yo, what is born? Like, at the end of the day, like, nigga, when, 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 when you get loyalty, nigga, you supposed to stand by your mans, bro. Anything my nigga Skinny go through, my nigga Josh go through, nigga, I'm, I'm, I'm there, nigga. Death do us part, nigga. That's gang. what real G's do, nigga. Gang, you gang. stay Sally. Gang, you started gang, rain. Gang. Yeah. Case ain't even started yet. Yo, I love you, bro. Like, nah, I love you too, gang. Though, man. Stay focused, bro. All right, gang. Free y'all niggas. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Yeah, non-boys, non-boys, underscore, underscore, federal. Gang. Yeah. And yo, and tell niggas to follow my gram, too. At Josh W the 9. Real niggas yeah. coming home soon, you heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And federal Instagram, at federal, underscore, underscore, nine boys. Nigga with two Zs. Follow the gang, nigga. We winning. Big shit coming soon. We about to be home. Love you, nigga. All right, gang. Hold that shit up for us, you heard? All right, gang. All right, love you, gang. Love you, Mitchell. too. All right, free you. Shit, that was my brother right there. 
Feel me? And he's locked up in New Jersey? Yeah. Three years. Okay, about to come home? How much shit, longer? Hopefully, man. Fingers crossed and shit. You can go look it up when you get some time. Everybody go see what my brother's locked up for. You feel me? Okay. Um. So uh, you're out of New Jersey. And what was it like for you growing up there? Shit, well, a lot of people don't know. I got seven brothers and sisters. Well, six brothers and sisters. I'm number seven. I got six brothers and sisters. Shit, um, I moved around a lot. Uh, Cause my mom was like into some shit, you feel me? So I moved around a lot. So I didn't move into Jersey till like I was 12 or 13. I was living with my, that's when my, my dad, my mom, my parents were split. So my dad was, my dad had just came home from prison. So my dad was like, yo, like I'm ready. He told my mom, like, I'm ready to be a father type shit, you know? So my mom took us to my dad, my brother that was just on the phone. My other brother's sisters got their own dad. So my brother that was just on the phone, Josh, we went to uh, live with my dad, who happened to live in New Jersey. And before living with my mom, so look, because I moved to Jersey when I was like 12 or 13. So that's a whole 11 years unaccounted for. So like 11 years, my mom had it hard, single mother with seven kids. So we was moving around a lot, EBT, you feel me, sleeping in shelters, sleeping in cars, because my mom didn't really have a stable job, so my mom was always hustling, you feel me? So I come, I come from poverty and shit like that, you know? It wasn't until I moved to my dad where I got some stability, because my dad was ready to be a job, ready to be a dad, he just came home, you know, he had his own place, and he was ready to be a father, he was ready to take on that responsibility. So then, around that time, like 12 or 13, I had a stable home, you know? middle class, feel me? And started fucking with the music and shit. I've been fucked with the music. But at this time, like, I was like, oh, I got stability now. Like, now I could, like, really do something with this shit. So that's what I was really doing. I went to, I did all my, like, from high school and middle school, that's where I, I've been in Jersey. So, you know, life there was regular, feel me? But before my mom, that shit was the trenches. Living with my mom was the trenches. Came with my dad, Shit was middle class, you feel me? Okay, and what was high school like for you? Shit, you know, I went to school with a lot of rich kids and shit, so they all had, like, they already knew what they was about to do with their life. Some was about to be lawyers, doctors, nurses, you know, police officers, shit like that. You know, like, they already, they families own corporations and shit like that. So they already got their future set. Me, I want to rap. So that was type like some outcast shit. Like a lot of people thought that shit was weird, you know? But once again, when you come from where I come from, that whole time living with my mom in the trenches, you know, poverty, sleeping in cars, shit like that, having like no money to eat, going days without eating, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. That shit inspires you. That shit motivates you to like, I don't want to do this shit. I want to become somebody in life. I got a story to tell. So... People I went to high school with couldn't grasp that concept, you know? Like, that shit was just so weird that I wanted to rap. But, you know, I was like, fuck it. I didn't care. So I was kind of like, you know, and I spent, I invested a lot of my money into my craft. So, like, when kids was getting cars and shit like that, cars and all brand new sneakers and shit like that, nigga, I said, man, fuck a car, fuck sneakers, fuck clothes. That's money being spent that could be used on the music. You know? So every dollar I ever had, because I always had a job. I was a hard worker. Any dollar I ever had, I put it right into the music. You know? That shit paid off. When, when did your music start taking off? 2018. Okay. Love Blast. You know, I took a snippet. Shit went viral. And I was like, I was like an overnight success, low key. You know? Like, I don't know if he was really heavy into Instagram at that time. Internet was different around 2018. Instagram wasn't so monetized and shit. There wasn't no TikTok. Like, I wouldn't say it was the easiest thing to go viral, but, you know, it was definitely like... If you wasn't... Like, now everybody's trying to rap. There's a new rapper every day. Back then... Shit was kind of slow. Shit was a little slower. And you kind of like, 
You just had to be special. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think you got to be special no more. Like, anybody could rap today. Feel me? That shit's going quick. Back then, I felt like you had to be a little special. And, uh, yeah, one night, I put up this song. The next morning, bro, I had just mad people listening to that shit. Everybody, like, tagging me and shit. I was going viral all over Facebook. And, uh, shit, bro, like, I had mad labels trying to sign me. Like, Interscope with, like, Todd, uh, Interscope with Joey IE and John Janik, 300 with Todd Moskowitz. You know, I had Interscope trying to sign me. Like, I met with all the big CEOs, like, face-to-face. Real shit. And I ended up signing the deal with L.A. Reid. Okay. And so what made you choose L.A. Reid over everybody else? Wasn't my choice, Cam. Wasn't my choice. See, see when I um when I started gaining some traction, when I started going viral, I had a manager like approach me type shit, you know? And at that time, I was excited to even have some type of level of success for my music to be somewhat like being noticed, you know? So I had a manager dude, like basically like, you know, he was like, yo, uh, I'm gonna get you signed and shit. Even though I was already gonna get signed, I didn't know that at that time though, you know? Mm. Because I'm still a kid, like I'm just, if you blowing, you about to get signed, you feel what I'm saying? So boom. He was like, I could get you signed. I never needed him to get signed. I was going to get signed regardless. You know? But he took, you know? I ended up signing some paper and shit. Basically, he had the exclusive right. Exclusive right to choose who I get signed to. So even if I didn't want to sign to L.A. Reid, I didn't even have the choice. Damn. That shit. I wanted to sign to uh, Atlantic. I wanted to sign with Atlantic, real shit. Wow. So he, okay. And did you have like, yeah, so did you have a bad experience with this manager overall? Type shit, man. Like he got me signed. He got me signed. And, you know, he took his little uh, finder's fee. And we basically parted ways. And I was stuck inside of a deal that I didn't even like. I'm not going to say I didn't want to be in it because I was grateful for the opportunity with L.A. Reid. You know? But... In my heart, that's not what I wanted. I've still tried to make the best of it, though. You know? Real shit. So, yeah, he parted ways. You feel me? He took my money, took the money I made off my finder's fee, and he used it on Lil Mosey. He blew blew Lil Mosey up off my finder's fee. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. uh, So, 2018, man. um, but But you do do the deal. And it works out for you. You start doing good. Doing good. Like, yeah, from a bird's eye view, like from your perspective, if somebody watching me, they could think I'm doing good because I'm famous. I'm lit. I got all this money. But business wise, like, like career wise. No, no. Like, I don't even I don't even have a sense of direction. What am I doing? I'm just a kid this time, bro. Like, what am I doing? Because the manager parted ways with me gonna go fuck with Lil Mosey so I'm just here like alright well what the fuck am I doing now so I'm just trying to get features I'm trying to get niggas to fuck with me off just my word of mouth I'm here just just going to studios just making songs and shit putting them out with the label the labels are supporting it and shit you know I had some I had a slight slight bit of success with, uh, with Back When I Was Broke that was like my my lead single that shit did that shit did numbers, you feel me? But like I didn't get like no remixes and shit like that. Like I didn't do no crazy songs with nobody. Like I did a song with PNB Rock, R.I.P. PNB Rock. He was one of my favorites. He was one of my idols. I did sign with him, but that wasn't no label shit. That wasn't no manager shit. Like how you see today. Like when you see an artist blowing up and they got like an A-list celebrity on a song with them, you know that was some label manager shit. You know, like I ain't getting none of that shit. Feel me? I ain't getting no crazy ass like support, nothing like that. I just did everything on my own. So, and then a few people that did fuck with me, like PNB Rock and Fetty Wap. You know, 
I was fucking with Shoddy for a little bit. Treyway. Like, nigga 6 9 snitched on and shit. I was fucking with them for a little bit. Freedom. Feel me? And, yeah, I was just trying to figure this shit out. But as I was, as I was progressing, it was slowly coming down at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Like, because there's no, like, growth. You know, I'm just making music and putting it out and just trying to get next to anybody I could possibly get next to. Along this journey, you have quite a bit of things happen. Yeah. I mean, you, I believe at one point you were arrested for some uh, some serious charges, right? Yeah, kidnapping. Some kidnapping? Kidnapping, yeah. Okay. Is, uh, so what all happened? Did that case get dismissed? Did you beat it? I beat that shit. Cause you went to trial and beat it? Or, or they... They dropped the charges. They dropped the charges, okay. Because peep this. You want to know the story, what happened? Yeah. Talk about it, this shit over with. Basically, look, you're me. You invite me to come over. You feel me? You invite me to come over. You got some shit laying down or whatever. I put that shit in my pocket and I leave. You check on your security cameras. You just stole something from me. You know? So you're like, what the fuck? So basically what happened, I had a friend steal something. He was my friend. Feel me? He was legit my friend. Stole some, stole some shit from me. A little bit of money, some clothes and shit like that. Some jewelry. And then I checked on my security cameras. I see him stealing it. I called a nigga on some regular shit. Because you know what I hate? I hate when people, like, like when people, like, if you steal something from somebody and... You call them or like, oh no, yeah. If someone steals something from you and you call them and you like, yo, I know you stole my shit, bring it back. Well, obviously they're not bringing it back. So you just eliminated your cards. Like you just completely just fucked yourself over. Because if I know you, if I know you stole something and you don't know that I know, well, don't I got the upper hand? Yeah. I hate when people do that shit. I'm gonna call him. And what you gonna call him and do what? Tell him that you know you stole it? Then what? He's gonna bring it back? He's not gonna bring it back. He's just gonna duck you the rest of your life. Feel me? So I didn't do that. I just called him regular. Yo, let's chill, bro. Feel me? Let's chill. We chilled and shit, nigga. And feel me? Niggas beat this. Feel me? Niggas did what they did. And he, uh, he called the police and shit. And he said we kidnapped him. So we kidnapped him. And then he broke into my house again when I got arrested. So as I'm getting, <laughs> you feel me? He came back to the house. Damn. It's all caught on my security cameras. You know, I hired a really good lawyer. And they basically brought all this evidence to the, you feel me? To the people. And they didn't have a credible witness no more. Like, you feel me? He got caught in a bunch of lies. Caught in a bunch of lies, mad, goofy shit. And they didn't, they didn't want to continue it. So they let me go. Damn. Real shit. Okay. I was looking at 30 years. If I would have got convicted for that shit, I would have been gone for 30 years. Damn. Yeah, I sat in the county for like four months. Or. So you beat this case. Now, when you get out, you go straight back to the music? Yeah. I go your, was your label still there? My label was still there. They were supporting me, but um, I wasn't getting the support I needed because right before I got locked up, the Hitco shit with L.A. Reid, that was a label I was signed to, Hitco. That shit was low-key like a new label. So they were still figuring out what they was doing, like as far as like sense of direction or whatever, you know, like getting staff, getting a building, you know, getting like deals locked in with distributors. And shit like that. So, mm. excuse me. Before I got locked up, there was a show that I was supposed to go to. It was a private Hitco show. Basically, the whole staff of Hitco, the CEOs of Hitco, and like anybody who's like invested into Hitco, the new talent is gonna perform in front of them. You know, and basically, whoever has like the best performance or whatever, or who sways over the staff and shit like that is basically going to be priority on the label. L.A. Reid fucked with me so hard, he wanted me to headline it. So basically, L.A. Reid was like, nigga, you're going to, you're about to be priority. You know? I missed it because I got locked up. 
they gave the shit to Yellow Beezy. Oh, damn. They gave the shit to Yellow Beezy. So I missed out on something that was really going to, like, take my shit to the next level. Damn, all for nothing. All for a goofy. Now, do you continue putting music out? Yeah, I continue putting music out. I put out an album and sh uh, mixtape, and, uh, you know, they didn't really support it because they were dealing with other shit, but I was like, I was in a frenzy with my label. I was trying to put out more music because, you know, I was just locked up for four months and shit like that. And, uh, you know, they stopped supporting anything I was putting out because I was kind of just like breaking the rules. Like I was like, man, I want this shit out, so I'm putting it out. Well, you put it out, we're not gonna support it because it's just not your turn yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not your cycle or whatever. So I'm just like, I don't care. I feel like my fans fuck with me so hard. I'm getting posted everywhere so much. I got such a big name at this point. Nigga, ain't nobody could stop me. So I, I went against the grain. I'm like, fuck, I'm putting this shit out. I don't give a fuck. They didn't like that. So I did that a lot. I just went again. I was just a, you know, and we eventually parted ways and shit. Parted ways. Now, when you're putting this out, are is are you getting paid from it or are they getting paid from it? They're getting paid from it. That's why label shit is weird. Like, y'all getting paid from this shit either way. You know? Like, I don't understand labels. Mm. But, nigga, they got their own system. They got their own reason why they do shit. Okay. And, okay, so you guys part ways and you go independent? Independent, yeah. From, like, 2019 to, like, now. 2019 to, like, 2023. Been oh, okay. Been independent. Have you had any other offers or anything going on? Nah. I had a few offers when I first got let go, but I was so turned off by the business. I was so turned off by the industry. I didn't want nothing to do with nobody. I kind of was just like, I'm going to just grind this shit independently. You feel me? Because I still got fans listening to my music. I still got some relationships that I made on my own. So I was like, I'm in a good space right now. Just keep putting out music and shit like that. So, but then I was going through like some personal shit. So I actually stopped putting out music for a little bit, which kind of hurt me because a lot of my fans forgot about me. And, you know, they move on to the next, you know, you can't, if you're not Drake or like French Montana or like Kodak or Lil Uzi, you can't go that long without putting out music. You know, fans are going to move on to the next thing. You know? Yeah. So, Shit like that happened to me and shit, so... But I was still raking in, like, thousands and thousands of dollars just off my streams. I still be getting a lot of stream money. So that's really, like... Could be getting more. Mm, okay. Well, you also had quite a few... I think I seen the time... You got in a couple fights? I got a, a couple fights. Times. Yeah, I got. I got. Did you, I think you got shot one time. Got shot. Hell yeah, I got shot. I got into a few fights. Niggas jumped me and shit like that. Yeah, this shit happened. I got shot in Miami. You feel me? Some bitch set me up. Uh, kind of take me through what happened. Shit, man. Like that shit was. I was really in a GTA video game for like a split second when that shit happened. Feel me? Uh, I'm in Miami and shit. Uh, I'm going to a party and shit. I got mad bread on me. Feel me? I'm shiny as hell, all ice. You feel me? Iced out. Uh, we leaving the I'm leaving the party and shit. I ain't valet my car. Cheap motherfucker. I should have valeted my car. I parked down the street. Not a good idea. It's not a good idea, nigga. There's vultures out there. There's wolves out there. Niggas is hungry. So I'm like, but I'm with I'm with gang and shit. So you know, nigga, you know we got them. You know, we situated. We moving correct. You know. And uh, so I'm like, ah, I don't think it really matters, though, because I'm a gang. You know, we situated. So, boom. We fucking um, start leaving the party and shit. Start walking back to the car. Car pulls up. Feel me? Like, two cars pull up. Niggas got masks on and shit like that. Niggas immediately just start spraying shit. Just start shooting shit. Bop, 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 bop. Feel me? Me and my mans. Duck behind the car and shit like, oh shit, they shooting, nigga. I didn't even know if they were shooting at us at first. Oh shit, niggas are shooting at us. Niggas try to hop out the car. Niggas start, niggas try to hop out the car and shit. My man's just let it off. He actually died recently too on some other shit. Rest in peace, Wolf. Man's just start letting it off. Boom, 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 boom. We in a shootout. I'm ducking behind the car. Nigga, I grab the grip. Pop, pop, pop. We start, you know, crazy shit, bro. 
what, I try to like turn around real quick, duck behind the other car, nigga, because I'm trying to get out of here. And we both trying to get out of here. We trying to film me back these niggas up and shit. Nigga clip me. Boom, I got shot. When I got shot, I think them niggas got scared because they wasn't, what they was trying to do was rob me. You know, when you go for a robbery, you're not really trying to kill nobody unless you really, really have to. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that show with PNB Rock, they didn't mean to kill him. They just wanted his shit. So these niggas is not ready to kill somebody. They just trying to get a quick lick. Feel what I'm saying? So when they when they hit me, I think they got scared because they were like, fuck, we might have killed this nigga. Or we might, you know what I'm saying? So niggas get out of there and shit. And then, and then nigga, I just remember like, yeah, I think I just got shot because my whole body just fell to the ground. You feel me? You only got shot the one time? Got shot twice. Twice. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there bleeding out and shit like that. Where did you get shot at? My leg. Oh, okay. Your leg. Broke my femur and shit. The leg shot is serious, nigga. You know the you know the football player Sean Taylor? He died from a leg shot. Did he? Damn. Sean Taylor, Redskins, they broke okay. into his house and they shot him in his leg. He died. Damn. Died. Rest in peace, Sean Taylor. Uh what's it called? Um so then my man's like, yo, wake up, wake up. Like, yo, like we hear we hear the sirens coming. The sirens are coming. So like, yo, what do I do? Do I stay here? Do I leave? Like, what you want me to do? Feel me? Cause we just got, you feel me? So he's like, nigga, I'm like, bro, just get the fuck out of here. Feel me? But he's like, yo, bro, I said, yo, you good, bro. You did what you had to do. Just get out of here. He gets out of there. He leaves and shit. And then the police finally get there and shit. And I just remember like, I'm just in and out of consciousness. And I was just like, fuck, yo. Like, I'm like, yo, am I about to die right now? So I took that, I took that story, I took that video. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, like, I'm gonna take a video because like, if this is the last time people see me, like nigga, I'm real close to my family and shit. I wanted my family to know what happened and shit. And like, I wanted my family to be able to see me one last time. So I took that story and that shit went dumb viral. Like nigga said, all types of weird shit. And uh, yeah, I ended up surviving. I remember I'm in the hospital bed. They're like, you got hit in your leg and you got hit like over here, damn near by the groin. So I'm like, damn, bro, like, am I be able to have kids? I remember just asking the, the doctor that shit. I'm like, yo, doc, tell me right now, like, am I going to be able to have kids? He said, yeah, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Because I like, don't want to have kids one day. I don't want to not have kids. Feel me like. And then they say, your femur's broken. You're going to have to do surgery. So they put me into some surgery and shit. I got a metal rod in my leg. Real damn. Shit. Hell yeah. That's a hell of a fucking shot, man. Fucked up your leg like that, damn. Word up, my nigga. And them they, they took like a, a long ass time to heal, right? Yeah, yeah. Real, yo, I healed. I healed, bro. Like, it's like I never even got shot. Like, this leg moves great. Like, but nigga, I'm definitely got a metal rod. I got my surgery scars. Like, you feel me? Like, type shit. And uh, yeah, that shit was life changing. Like. Shit crazy. After I see so many other rappers pass away from that shit, I always look and like, thank God that I'm still here. You feel me? Because you know, tomorrow's not promised, bro. Tomorrow's not promised. Yeah, a lot of rappers, man. Uh, unfortunately, man, seems like it's been a, a tough four or five years or, or so, man. Yeah, man. For rappers, hip-hop in general. That just goes to show you, bro, it's like, you can still be the most loved artist. You know, some people like to blame it on like, oh, well, you're hated. So like people are naturally going to try to do something to you in real life. Right? That's like the concept, right? But when you look at PNB Rock, he was loved. PNB Rock was loved. PNB Rock had no beef with nobody that I know of. You've never seen PNB Rock act out of character or nothing. PNB Rock was a solid artist who was loved. You feel me? And that shit still happened to him. Because you cannot control niggas being hungry. Whether you're loved, whether you're hated, whether you fucking, you know what I'm saying? People are going to be hungry. You got to move proper. It has nothing to do with how you are compared to the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is sad. Yeah, it is, man.
It's it's been going on quite a bit lately, man. You you mentioned P and B Rock. You did a song with him. Yeah. Kind of knew him a little bit, or yeah, we spent a lot of time together when we like around that time we was working together. We did a lot of shit together. I, I hung out with him mad times. Like that was really like him and Wap, him and Fetty Wap were like low key like my mentors. Like they was trying to mentor me through the shit, but I was being hard headed. I didn't really listen or take a lot of the advice or guidance that they gave me. So yeah, but. P.B. Rock was a solid dude. How'd you feel when you heard that he was shot? You know, like... Bro, like... I cried, bro. Damn. I cried, bro. We hadn't talked in so long, but I cherish the memories that I have with people, you know? I'm really like... I cherish a lot of the memories that I spent with people. And uh, that shit was sad, bro. Like, I really cried, bro. And I spent the whole day just listening to his music on replay. And like... Nigga, I lost one of my homies, you feel me? Because we did kick it a lot. We kicked it a lot for the time that we was together. So we really had became friends on some shit. So that was like losing one of my homies in the hood. You know, like, that shit was sad, bro. I cried my eyes out. You mentioned Fetty Wap. He's locked up too right now. Yeah, free Fetty Wap. He's from Jersey. From Jersey. Yeah, man. That was uh, that was pretty surprising just to see that happen to him, man. That yeah. was um, I I that one kind of came out of left field. I don't. That think was left field. That was left expected field. to hear. So, yeah, you know I'm saying something like that. Yeah, but he'll be home soon though. He'll be home soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I see you worked with Soldier Boy. Yeah, Soldier Boy was uh, one like the first people to like tapped in with me like back then. Shout out to Twenty Four Hours. You know him. I 20, know. Twenty Four Hours had linked me with Soldier Boy. Twenty Four Hours, that was my nigga. He did a lot of shit. I ain't speak to him in a minute. I hope he good. But 24 hours, he was a real dude. But uh, Soldier Boy, yeah, bro. <laughs> he was one of like, the first people to tap in with me. We did a lot of music together and shit. Looked that shit up on YouTube. And uh, One thing I noticed about Soldier Boy, he's always tapping in with people early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he, he does he, fuck yeah, with he, like the up and coming dudes. I don't know if he still does. Nah, he definitely do. Right when back when I was broke, he was, used to. Right when back when I was broke, like was about to come out, he had, he had hit me up and shit, and was like, keep working. And I was excited, man. I was a kid back then. I was like, Soldier Boy, that's crazy. I remember listening to Soldier Boy like walking home to sc- walking home to school in the morning, playing "Kiss Me Through the Phone" in my iPod. Mm. You feel me? Or turn my swag on and shit. So that shit was cool when I when I when, when Soldier Boy hit me and shit. Did you guys get in the studio and work or? Hell yeah, we got mad music. Oh, you guys got a few songs. Yeah, I was on I was on one of his albums. Uh, what was that shit called? Uh, Never looking back. Oh okay. Never looking back. Yeah, like song number six and shit. Yeah, I was on his album. Okay, he he be going viral or for all types of stuff. Or can't go back. Or can't go back. Won't go back. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he be going viral all the time. He do. Soldier Boy put me on my first private jet. No shit. He put me on my first private jet. That shit was cool. Hell yeah. Okay. And how do you feel about, you know, everything going on with Soldier Boy, all the viral moments and everything? Yeah. Man, Soldier Boy can't be fucked with. You know, like he's such like a pioneer to this shit. That nigga could say whatever he want. Like, feel me? Soldier Boy just he's one of those people, like, you can't really say nothing to him. Because of all the shit that he accomplished. Yeah. He's just Soldier Boy. Pioneer. Everybody dancing now. Hey, Soldier Boy was the first person to do that shit. Everybody's dancing in their music. A lot of New York dudes. And Philly. And New Jersey. New Jersey. And New Jersey. Yeah, the the whole it was, the Bronx, New York drill scene. It's, it's kind of... Spread to the East Coast a little bit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. So what what all are you working on? What do you got coming up? Shit, bro. I'm just putting out music, collecting them streams. You feel me? Like, I don't really got, like, just shooting music videos, dropping music. I'm helping artists, you know, artists that need, like, guidance and shit like that, mentorship. I'm helping a few upcoming artists and shit like that. And uh, I'm just having fun with this shit. You feel me? I'm just doing me. Are you going to put some... So you got some artists that are signed to you? Or are going to um, sign to you? Probably. Uh, I don't want to sign somebody and uh, make them 
empty promises, you know? So I'm trying to really like, if I take that risk, if I take that, like I want to make sure it's the best situation for both of us, you know? I don't want to give somebody false hope. I don't want to leave nobody on because that's fucked up. You feel me? So I really just like, you know, just being friends with niggas and shit like that and just seeing where, where this friendship could take us, you know? Yeah, I noticed it's it's hard for artists who are signed to rappers because the rappers still got their own career they're trying to work on. And I, I mean, I, I can and see if it works. Got, if, if you got like a team around you, you know what I'm saying? Like you got like, you know, uh, you got you, an artist, and then you got like two other dudes, kind of like a Rockefeller type of situation where you have like multiple people that are, you know what I'm saying, all got, that aren't rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like that that can yeah. work, but if you if you're yeah. by yourself and trying to sign people, it could just be too much it's work. A, it's a little hard, yeah. And like you don't want to fuck nobody over, you know. So that's really where it's at, you know. Shout out my nigga Poker the Jew, you know Poker the Jew. He was like the Island Boys manager. You know we've been fucking with some shit a little bit, you know. No, I don't know. Or he was like the ex Island Boys manager. Okay. So, yeah, fuck the Island Boys. He's weird. But yeah, man, so you got a lot of stuff coming up. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Hell yeah, Cam. We working. For sure. Okay, well, man, I appreciate you. Yeah. Definitely, man. I appreciate you having you and, uh, well, you know, yeah. wish you success, man. Hell yeah. All right, for sure. All right. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.